Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna talk about my Christmas TBR. <music> We are here. We're here. Howdy, y'all. How you doing? We're here <laughs> with a great cup of coffee, and we're going to talk about all things Christmas TBR, okay? So, I have, um, am I filming this in September? I just noticed. Yeah, you still see a little remnants of fall decor? Yes, because I kind of know what I'm already going to be reading for Christmas or picking from anyway. So, did I pull these Christmas decor out? Just for the video idea. <laughs> Just so by the time you're watching this, we have got the vibe. Y'all may hear a cat running around being crazy. We're here. So, Simba, he wild now. I'm filming this early. Went ahead and pulled up my Marion Bright shirt. I wear this like all the time every year. So, I hope that you're doing well whenever you're watching this. And that you're getting excited for Christmas just like I am, okay? I, well, at the filming of this video, I'm probably not as excited about Christmas. But, I will be when this comes out. <laughs> Okay, so what are you going to be reading for Christmas? Let me know. I will have a Christmas book recommendation video coming out soon. I didn't have even pulled out my Christmas mug, honey. I mean, we're here for the vibes, all right? No, I'm just kidding. But I really like filming these type of videos because it just kind of helps me well round my Christmas TBR and help me kind of go back and say, what did I say I wanted to read again? Because these Christmas books are always spread throughout my house. They're on random parts of the shelves, all the things. And so... We're going to hang it out of the way. Now, first on the list are some books by Mandy Blake. I picked these up earlier this year, and they are all in her Freedom Ridge, yeah, Heroes of Freedom Ridge series, which is not just her series. This is a series where a lot of different authors wrote different companion novels in the same, I guess, probably town or something. I haven't even read really one in this series, though. Do y'all hear this cat? Anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to keep going. Uh, anyway, so I want to try to read these, at least two of these, if not all three, we'll see kind of how I get on with it. I really enjoyed one of her other Christmas books last year, and as of the filming of this video, I haven't read it yet because it's not out, but she has another one coming out that I plan to read called uh, Healing the Cowboy, I think. So yeah, I'll be reading that one too, but these are some that I own that I really want to try to get my physical reads off my shelf done. So first we have got Rescued by the Hero. Then we have got Hope for the Hero, and then we have Guarded by the Hero. So, looking forward to these. Let's see. I don't know if I need to tell. I'm probably not going to tell you every little thing about these, but the Hope for the Hero says it is uh, an opposites attract romance. Guarded by the Hero, his job is to protect her, not to fall in love with her, girl. <laughs> and let's, let's see. Rescued by the Hero. This fake relationship is hiding, the hardest part about this fake relationship is hiding it from her brother, especially when it doesn't feel fake. So, looking forward to these. These, I love these covers though. Like, does it not make you want to go snowboarding or something? I mean, come on. <laughs> I ain't never been snowboarding, but it makes me want to. So, anyway, now I want to read, or next, not now, next I want to read Home for Christmas by Courtney Cole. I read, I think, The Christmas Dress or something like by this author. It's leaving me, forgive me for names. But I read another book by this author. <laughs> this cat, <laughs> he is wilding out, you guys. Okay, I read another book by this author and I really enjoyed it. So, I'm, this is a secular author, so I didn't really find anything crazy in that book. So, hopefully there's nothing crazy in this one. I think this is going to be like an emotional read. We'll see. But it says, Piper doesn't know which way is up or down. Her grand, her last remaining family died two weeks before Christmas, leaving Piper to reevaluate her life. Does she really want to stay chained to the family business just to hang on to this old house? She doesn't care that her great-great-grandpa built it with his own hands. How can she, oh, I remember this now. How can she make a huge life decision when she'd never even been outside of Alaska? She needs to leave the snowy wilderness that's her backyard and see the world. And since her grand left her a battered old compass, Piper takes this as a secret message from her grand grandmother to follow her heart. But before she is even a foot outside the door, she's caught in a blizzard and wakes up into the original home her ancestors built in 1945, a time when her grand was just a girl Piper's age. So she's time traveling a little bit somehow in this. You already know that's up my alley. And it sounds like she's going to really realize like, why she needs to probably keep this place. 
um, and her, her family. She's going to see all the joy and getting to know her grandmother in a different way. And, and there's going to be a light, that's, a light that's shed on this whole situation. So, this sounds really good. We'll see. I'm in my Colin Cobble era, okay? So, I picked these up off Pango Books this year, and I'm looking forward to trying them out. We have got All is Calm, All is Bright, two Christmas novellas, and Silent Night and Holy Night. Some more Christmas novellas. <laughs> so, two in, two in one here. We've got four total. Am I going to mark all four on Goodreads? Probably. <laughs> if they're separate, we get in the counts, okay? No, I'm just kidding. But... I really want to try to read these and see kind of where I land with them. I don't even know really what what series or anything these are connected to. It looks like this one in red. All, in, all it looks like all is calm, all is bright is tied to Bluebird Ranch and Hope Beach for holiday romance and mystery. And then Holy Night, Silent Night is tied to Rock Harbor and Aloha Reef. I've not really read any of, the, of those series, so hopefully it's okay I read these. Let me know if you think otherwise, but usually Christmas novellas, it's fine. So, yeah, these will be on my list. Then we have got some rom-coms, you guys, like a ton of rom-coms. Now, I didn't pick every single one of the rom-coms from this list because that's, that would be insanity. Wouldn't it be? <laughs> or should I? No, uh, but I really wanted to pick the ones I thought I would read. So... First on the list, we have got Cabin Crush by Casey Stockton, and I've heard nothing but good things about this book. Um, one of my friends really enjoyed it, and so I love the cover, by the way. This is in the Gift Wrapped Romance series, and so I picked up a lot of these. I've only got two from that series on this list, but I want to at least give it a go and see what I think. So, in this one, we've got Rachel and Max, and... She's had a crush on her brother's best friend her entire life. She's in high school. Once in high school, she got a taste of what it would be like to be to be with him thanks to some well-placed well mistletoe. Incredible and humiliating. We always spend Christmas with Max's family at our cabin, and every year I have to suffer through a blissful week with him in a completely platonic way. His steady stream of girlfriends has made him off limits. Until now. It's Christmas. We're at the cabin together, and Max Dawson is single. That's all we need to know. I think that's going to be good. All right. I love like the whole forced proximity cabin life and especially at like Christmas. Come on. All right. Now, next we have got Solo for the Season by Martha Keys. I have really enjoyed two of Martha Keys books. So, I, I haven't read any of her rom-coms yet. So, I've got two Christmas ones on my list here. You'll see the next one here in a second. But love this cover. Love these covers. The design of this was done very well, I think. So, we've got Cabin Fever can spark unexpected flames. Uh oh, girl. <laughs> I'm going to give a... After being dumped, oh, actually, I should, I should say the names. I'm biting my tongue. Oh, my gosh. I'm talking too fast. <laughs> P.S. I'm sorry I talk too fast. I, I still get comments telling me I talk fast. I can't stop. <laughs> so, I know there's a slow down button. You can play back speeds, go, go negative. But a lot of y'all speed me up. So, apologies. I'm so sorry. I can't change who I am. Okay. So, anyway, I've got Maggie and Wes. And so, Maggie, after being dumped last Christmas, I'm taking extreme measures to ensure nothing and no one ruins my happy holidays this time. I'll be safely wrapped in a cocoon of kitsch, kitschy, I don't know, <laughs> something, Christmas decor, complete with surrounding winter wonderland and an ultimate holiday mountain cabin. So what if the countless elves, the elf figurines, make me a little uneasy, uh, or if there are a couple hiccups with cabin maintenance? There's a bigger problem. The assistant manager happens to be one of my many teasing classmates from my childhood and my former crush. He, he keeps showing up to my cabin to fix things. I'm more worried about what he might break. What? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I'm excited for these books, you guys. Hopefully, my future self remembers my past self. So, we have got next a Holly Jilly Christmas by Emma St. Clair. I love Emma St. Clair, so I have to try one of her Christmas books. With that said, <laughs> I don't know if I could read this outside of reading something that I haven't read, if it's tied to anything, but I don't care. I'm going to read it. So, usually these are fine to read standalone as usual. So, this is Will This Be a, a Jolly Christmas for Jilly? <laughs> My life is nothing like the movies we make at the studio where I work, especially not when it comes to relationships. Which means that there will be no romance between me and Case, the grumpy exec I've had a crush on since the very, our very first not-so-meet-cute. We're simply two co-workers scouting the town of Sheetcake, Texas, at a filming for, or a location for filming. 
That's it. Though, to be honest, I'm suspicious of why he came on this trip at all. Whatever the reason, there will be no Christmas magic and definitely no mistletoe kisses. But when he actually starts talking to me and reveals the humor and kindness buried beneath his gruff persona, my life crush, or my little crush, explodes into something a little harder to hide. But he's harboring secrets of his own. Honey, I've not read the Sheet Cake series, so... It's okay, but uh, I really want to read this one to knock it out, so sounds cute. I like the covers for these two, and I love, I have to say, her font is some of my favorite fonts I've ever seen. It's just like that whimsical, playful font style, and as a marketing person, I love this. Okay, anyway, now we have got The Twelve Holidays, okay, by Emma St. Clair, and this is also another novella uh, tied probably to some other series she got, Love, love Clichés. As if someone tells you that waiting for your boyfriend is in a giant stocking, it's a good idea. They're wrong. I learned this the hard way when I discover my boyfriend is cheating on me. Girl, we starting off with some mess. Got some tea. Once again, I find myself crying on the very broad and sturdy shoulders of my best friend, Weston. And even though he rejected me when we were kids, my feelings for Weston start bubbling back to the surface, especially when he insists that we work our way through the list of 12 holidays I had planned for my ex. 12 dates with my super hot and total perfect BFF. Um, okay, you don't have to ask me twice. Only the dates continue to be a disaster. The biggest disaster of all is the way I'm about to get my heart crushed again by my best friend because I can't hide my feelings anymore and I don't think being just friends is enough. Let's go. All right. Now, we've got some Courtney Walsh ones. I've got two Courtney Walsh ones. I'm going to pull the other one out. This right next behind it. So, we can go ahead and talk about those together. All right. So, first we've got Merry Xmas. I went to read this like when it first came out, never did. So I had to get me in my own copy and I'm looking forward to this one. So this one says, I haven't been home for Christmas in eight years, but that's about to change. This year I'm traveling to my small hometown to convince my producer to make me the permanent host of Good Day Denver. The plan, charm viewers by sharing my favorite family tr Christmas traditions and in turn get the likes, clicks, and shares to land the job. Not the plan, running into my ex-boyfriend in my house for Christmas. Don't y'all love how I read these synopsis? I emphasize. Anyway, <laughs> but here he is, a guest of my mother who apparently had more trouble letting go of him than I did. Unfortunately, he is as handsome and charming and talented and annoying and as frustrating and flirty as ever. Girl, <laughs> the drama. Unfortunately, oh wait, I already read that. <laughs> Even more unfortunately, he seems to have a plan of his own to convince me to give him a second chance. There's only one problem. My viewers love him. Oh wait, first she said, which is not happening. There's only one problem. <laughs> My viewers love him. More than that, they love us. Me and Max. My ex. The boy who broke my heart. The boy I now had to fake flirt with to win over the heart of my viewers. But it's not their hearts I'm worried about. It's mine. Girl, we got a second chance. We got tea. We got social media mess. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not always into the social media mess drama, but that one sounds like it's going to be funny. So, yeah. All right. Then we've got a match made at Christmas. Uh, and this is a Nantucket love story, which I've not read her Nantucket love story books uh, or Nantucket story books or whatever. Is that these? I think it's this one. Wait. Yeah, I think it's these. These are like published by Tyndale, the uh, more crucifixion style, I think. So I've got them. I just haven't read them. I bought them for like five bucks one time. Couldn't really pass it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hayes McGuire never believed the stories about a famous Nantucket matchmaker until she ropes him into taking over her duties while she's off island for Christmas. So he enlists the help of the one person he can trust with this crazy scheme, his best friend Prudence. Armed with a series of rules, a book of success stories, and the promise of Christmas magic, the pair of old friends set out to make a Christmas match. Little do they know, magic doesn't discriminate and they soon find their years of friendship deepening into something more. Will Prue and Hayes ignore the electricity in the air between them or will there be more than one, one match made at Christmas? Sounds cute. I like the matchmaking stuff. We see that a lot. So uh, I, I didn't really used to, but I'm starting to like that more a little bit. So we'll see. Now, a couple more rom-coms. Are there any doubt? The year of the rom-com literally is like last year was the start of my rom-com journey. And this year has been the year of the rom-com. Okay. Uh, first, we've got Martha Keys. Uh, host for the holidays. This is in the Christmas Escape series. I have read only one book in this series, and so I'm looking forward to kind of continuing on. I have pretty much the whole series, except for one maybe. I don't know, but this, this is the one I decided to pick for this year. We'll see how it goes. And this one is Maddie and Remy. We've got, um, after two years, 
After two years and zero proposals, my relationship could use a little spark. Paris during the holidays seems like just the ticket. One perfect final opportunity for my boyfriend to take things to the next level. The fact that he's rented me the tiny servant quarters in an apartment of a very good looking Frenchman is puzzling. And when he asked that Frenchman to take me around the city while he's busy at work trainings, color me confused. Is this some sort of pre-engagement test? If so, I'm not sure I'm doing too hot. <laughs> oh, about that. Oh my gosh. Y'all, what? <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, okay. Reading the synopsis got me a little nervous. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Y'all know why. So, Remy, offering to host my friend's vacation rental means making sure the first review is five solid sparkling stars. When the guest who shows up is a beautiful American woman, I'm thinking my task might be more enjoyable than I thought. Until I find out she has a boyfriend, Ma Ma Maddie deserves to have an amazing time in Paris. So I'm more than happy to oblige when the guy asks me to show her the city. It's cool. I'm cool. This is all for that five-star review. So hopefully this doesn't kind of have cheating too long or something like that. And then it's like where she's got the boyfriend and then, you know, things happen. We will see where I land with this. That makes me a little nervous now. Should I take it off my list? Somebody tell me. Anyway, I don't like when they already have a boyfriend. Oh my gosh, I did not. <laughs> so, I know. I prematurely put that on the TBR, but convince me. Somebody tell me. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Gracie Ruth Mitchell, A Not So Holiday Paradise. This is another Christmas Escape novel. I love these covers too. Um, So, this one says sunscreen, obviously, because there's little... Wait, what? It's hard to read these. Look how... They should put dark font. Sunscreen, obviously, because these Irish freckles of mine will burn, baby, burn, and lobster red is not a great color on me. Two, an extra dose of my seizure meds, just in case. Three, a backpack full of snacks, including, but not limited to, a canteen of Dr. Pepper, a box of mini Christmas cookies, and granola bars, the gross crumbly kind, and not the chocolate chip kind, because I've tried to be healthy. <laughs> Four, sunglasses so that when I inevitably wind up staring at my brother's best friend who I haven't seen in years no one will be able to tell I've been in love with him for years but it would never work out he lives on a literal island while I'm in grad school it can't hurt to look though right five also bug spray my packing list is all well and good for a quick port excursion as part of my family's Christmas cruise but when the cruise ship leaves him behind uh oh the cruise ship leaves her behind with only the contents of my bag and my brother's best friend to keep me company well i've got problems especially since i'm going to run out of medicine soon and i don't think they make sunscreen enough to block the sparks that are growing between beckett and me now this one sounds really good <laughs> this is what i'm excited about i am i'm still going back somebody tell me i might have to look at goodreads okay all right now there's three other books here that are on my possibilities one i have put on the list for three years now <laughs> no, i'm just kidding two years at least i know the cat the christmas tree and other true stories of feline joy and merry mischief would i have read this if there was an audiobook already probably but there isn't <laughs> so yeah it's going back on here it's supposed to have some cute christmas cat stories so yeah so now we got simba back another cat in the house let's go <laughs> i'll probably be more in the mood um, then I want to read The Perfect Christmas, A Winter Montana Novella by Belle Renshaw. I will say I read, okay, this one. A couple, hey, Sam. A couple years ago, One Christmas in Winter. I really like this one. I think it's the first one. So this is the second one in that series. I've got like several of these in the series, all except maybe the last one. Um, her real name is Emily Haney, but this is uh, Belle Renshaw is a pen name for her. So looking forward to this one. Enjoyed the first one. Got four stars. This says it is... Bo and Ansley. And so, born and raised in Winter, Montana, Bo Bradley can't imagine life anywhere else. During the holiday season, his coffee shop, Mountain Grounds, is as busy as ever. And now that his girlfriend is back in town, things finally seem to be lining up until he gets a call that could change it all. Ansley is back in town after nine months uh, in Canada, and she's ready to celebrate this Christmas season in the tried and true winter style. There's only one problem. Her boyfriend lacks Christmas spirit. Her solution, make this Christmas perfect to remind Bo just how special this time of year is. So it sounds like they are having issues, and it says Ansley will have to come to the realization that no matter how perfect things are, the imperfections in life make it worth living. So, yeah. Um, Love is worth the risk. Will the perfect Christmas be enough to convince Bo that a life with Ansley could be equally perfect? Interesting to see what happens. Okay. 
And then the final book on here is another Melody Carlson. I do try to read a couple of her books each year. I've already read one this year. And this is more of an older one. So I've been enjoying some of her older ones actually more so. Um, well, I did like one, the quilt for Christmas. Or a quilt for Christmas. The Christmas dog and the Christmas cat is in this one. So we'll see if I get to it. I don't know. That's like a possibility. So that's everything on the list. I may have others that come in, but we're here. I just want to go ahead and film this video while I had time. All the good things. Let me know what you're going to be reading for Christmas. I am so excited for the holiday season coming up. You know, we always have time off of the good things. I may actually start reading some Christmas books in November just to prepare so I can actually get some of these done and just be in the mood for Christmas. I even sometimes read books after Christmas leading up to January 1st-ish. Um, so yeah, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Let's chit chat below down in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all.